I'm so glad to see you in this teaching, and I believe that you are hungry for the things of God, and the Lord shall bless you. The Lord promises us that we will receive His guidance and His help when we fear Him and obey Him. In Psalm chapter 34, verses 9 to 11, the Bible says, Fear the Lord, you, His godly people. For those who fear Him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. I believe that the Lord will teach you in this teaching, and you are that person who walk in the reverent fear of the Lord, and He will bless you and guide you. Listen to the Word of God carefully, and your heart, pay attention to the Word of God. Thank you so much. See you in the teaching. I would like to start a new series of sermon. Actually, I have so many series that I'm doing, but I take turn different subjects so that I will not get bored. I want to start a new series of teaching called Eagle Christians. So we're going to learn about eagles. You learn, you heard about eagles in the Bible, that we soar like an eagle. But we want to learn in detail many sermons in this series, how we can be an ego Christian. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for teaching us, to show us, Lord, your way. We learn many things from your creation. You call, Lord, the church as your bride, your family, your body. Lord, you call the Holy Spirit, the fire, the wind, the water, Lord, you try to help us to understand who you are and how should we walk with you by giving the example of the creation, the nature, Lord, around us. We thank you, Father. We want to learn from you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 19 to 21, the Bible says, Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. This Bible clearly says that the creation that we see with our own eyes Lately, I love springtime. I just went to the University of Washington last Tuesday and took some video with the cherry blossom. Oh, look at the flowers. Look at all the um, flowers that you see, the mountain, the creation, the stars. Um, we cannot deny that God is real. It's impossible that this thing happened by just explosion or by just some uh, random thing. It's so clear. When I open the skull and look at the brain of people, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, occipital lobe, when I look at all this anatomy, I say, wow, this is not something come on into the world by accident. There must be a creator. He revealed his attributes. He revealed his magnificent glory and power through the creation. That's what the Bible tried to say. Unfortunately, many people around the world look at the creation, look at the nature, and they worship the nature instead of worship the creator. We should worship the creator. And we have no excuses at all to say that there is no God. There is God. And God is so smart, so good in creating all these things. If we come from one cell, uh, even not one cell yet, as a doctor, how come in the world potassium, calcium, and sodium, and all this come together, become a living thing? you never seen it, even in the laboratory. You have never seen evolution today. 
When people think that this living thing come from to be one cell by accidentally sodium, potassium, calcium, all joined together become living thing. And from one cell evolved into little animal, a little animal evolved into human being. Have you ever seen one monkey turn into man? I have never seen that. And all this human history, you never seen one monkey turn into man. When if we come from the same cell, like the evolution say, we should be able to do cross breeding. But if you marry a monkey, I'm sorry, you will not have a baby. Because there is no cross breeding. Because we were created unique by God. I talk all of this because I want to lead you to talk about the eagle. The eagle was created by God. So let's look at the scripture here together. We're going to learn about the eagle together. Deuteronomy 32 verses 11 to 13 say, As an eagle stirs up its nest, however, a uh, hover, I'm sorry, as an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. The mother or the father eagle carry the little one on its wing. So the Lord alone let him, him in Jacob, and there was no foreign God with him. He made him ride in the heights of the earth. The Bible says that God is the eagle, and we are little eagle. And we are riding on the wings of the father eagle in the heights of the earth. Basically, the Bible tried to say that God wants us to go higher and higher and higher in our life, in our character, in our faith, in our love, in our anointing. He doesn't want us to go down. He wants us to go up higher and higher. That when people see us, we are flying very high. And not only that, that he might eat the produce of the fields. Our God will take care of our needs. He will make him draw honey from the rock. Is that a supernatural thing? Honey come from the rock. So God will supernaturally provide for us. He is a supernatural God. And oil from the flinting, flinty rock. Our God will take care of us. He is the eagle in this scripture. The eagle, can I see the picture one, picture number one, the picture of eagle, fly high. The eagle is symbol, a symbol of majesty, is symbol of strength, and this symbol has been used by humanity for centuries. It was used by the Romans, the ancient Egyptians, and by the Greeks. In fact, Eagle was used as a symbol of the Roman Empire, their shields. Look at picture number two. That is the shield of the Roman Empire. And next one is the Egypt flag. Use the picture of eagle as well. The eagle is also used by the United States of America as well. Look at the next picture. We use eagle to show majesty and strength of the U.S. And next picture too, picture number five. You can see that we put the flag of America with the eagle. Therefore, an eagle stands for majesty and strength and power. No other birds in the whole world can fly as high as an eagle. The eagle can fly up to even 10,000 feet above the ground. 10,000 feet, very high. And they build their nest in a very high place, in a very high mountain. Next picture, you can see that the eagle fly very high above the mountain, 10,000 feet. And they build their nest in the cliff of the high cliff. Next picture. You can see the nest on a high mountain built by an eagle. The golden eagle live in the holy land. Next one is a picture of the golden eagle. They build their nest in the high cliff. And this nest is 
1,000 feet above the valley floor, very high. The eagle is a very unique bird. Their nests are not like other birds' nests at all. They're very unique, very big construction. They use logs and also branches of tree. Some of the pieces of the nest that they built is four inch diameter and nine feet long. They're very strong. They can build the nest with a big piece of logs and also branches of tree. Eagles are very strong. They can come down and pick up an animal that is heavier than them. Look at the picture. And they can fly up again and take this animal away. Wow, eagle is very strong. Everyone say, I'm an eagle Christian. I'm strong. I fly high. <laughs> now you understand why the Bible compare eagle to God and compare eagle to us. We are eagle Christians. Now we're going to learn some principle from the eagle. How can we become the eagle Christian? So number one, the first principle is this. The eagles build their nest in a cliff, in a high cliff. They put logs and branches together and they bring small branches and also they put some leaf on their nest. This is high in the mountain. Look at Matthew 7, 24 together. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock. The eagle built their nest on the rock. And they built very strong. Their nest can withstand all the storm, all the nasty weather. They are very, very strong, the nest. And this is in a high mountain on the rock. My brother and sister, what we learn from the eagle is this. We should have a discipline of life and we should spend time to build our house, our life on the good foundation. We should build our life on the good foundation. What is the good foundation? The word of God. If you want to fulfill the calling in your life, if you want to be blessed, you want to be strong, you want to fly high, you want to be successful, you want to be the head, not the tail. You want to be used by God. It's so important you need to have discipline of your life. And you spend time reading the Bible. Listen to good teaching. Why God put in my heart as a pastor to produce so many teachings to the point that my wife, Pastor Da, say, I think you produce too much. I say, it's fine. At least I leave it there. People can listen later on. Because I want my members to really build their house on the foundation of the Word of God. If you build your house on the Word of God and you practice what you learn, you shall be like an eagle that build your life on a very strong foundation. The nest of the eagle is very heavy, very strong. It's very hard for the wind to blow it away, and they build it on the rock too, on the cliff. So I want to encourage all of you. When I was a new believer, I just turned to Christ in 1981. Right away, this is, I'm not lying, I'm serious. Right away, I joined Bible study, a few times a week actually. And I went to the church where uh, I want to learn from them. And I say to the lady, at the tape table, at that time, there was no CD, no MP3, no YouTube, nothing, just tape. I went to the lady who sat at the tape table. Can I see the list of your tape in this church? She pulled out five pages. I say, I buy all of them. She was shocked. You buy all of them? Yes. So she came out with a big box. And I took all the tapes back home. I listened to every single tape. And I want to know about God. 
I want to study the Bible. I want to understand more. I want to build my house on a good foundation. And everything I learn, I say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. When I learn something, yes, I do it. And that's why I have been successful to today. Because I build my house on the foundation of the Word of God. Jesus said again, Matthew 7, 24 to 27, so everyone who hears, everyone say hears. Not just read the Bible. I mean, thank God you can read your own Bible. But God appoints some apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, pastor to teach you the Word of God. That's why in the book of Acts chapter 2 says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So everyone who hears this word of mine and acts upon them, not just only hear, but do it, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat against that house. In our life, we're going to face some trials and hardships. The wolf, the lions, the devil going to try to kill us, attack us, destroy our finances, destroy our marriage, destroy our life. They want to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But that's compared to the wind and the uh, storm that blew against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a stupid. Oh, wow, the Bible used the word stupid. Mm. I dare not say that with my mouth because people will think that I'm rude. Stupid, foolish man who built his house upon the sand and the rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell, and great and complete was the fall of it. It's very clear here. If you want to be an eco-Christian, you build your nest on a rock. You need to take serious about hearing the word of God. We produce teaching into series, like demonology, uh, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, walk and live by the Spirit, the series called the Good News, led by the Holy Spirit. We have so many series, I want you to take serious about listening to the Word of God and putting it into practice. Don't spend too much time on the bad news. Don't spend too much time on the games. I tell you, the games will not help you. I don't, I'm not against game. You can play game. But don't play game hours and hours and hours. You rather feed yourself with the Word of God. How many people want to be successful? How many people want to last to the old age and be strong and be fruitful? The game will not help you. The Word of God will help you. And I speak from my own experience. I'm not a young man anymore, but I still go to young adult service <laughs> and young adult care group on Saturday morning because I still feel young and strong not because I'm a special man, because we, I feed myself with the Word of God all the time. When the storm comes, I can handle. I can fight against the storm. So we need to get a hold of the Word of God. We need to take time to get the Word of God. We need to really obey the Word of God. Whatever God say, do it. Do it. Have faith and practice what God say. That's my prayer to you. Please obey the Word of God. Please practice the Word of God. I give you an example. When I was a new believer, God said to me, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. When I read that scripture, Matthew 16, 18, I right away join the church. And after that, I bring my kids to church. I commit, I commit myself to the local church. I raise my kids in the local church. I get them involved in the youth group. I get them involved in care group. And now I'm glad all of my three children still love God because God used the church to save my family, to have a community of God's people together. You see, it's so important to obey the word of God. God says something, do it. And you will see the result and the 
good outcome. Let me ask you this question. If you build a house, but the storm comes and the house falls down, which one is easier? Which one saves more money? If you build the house good the first time, with good foundation, with the right design, and the other way, build shaky house and without good foundation and it fall, and you have to rebuild again. Which one spend less time and less money? The first one or second way? First way, you build your house on the rock, on the word of God, and you keep stronger and stronger, and the wind hit you, and you still, ha, 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 ha. But on the other hand, if you don't care about the word, you don't read the Bible, you don't listen to the word of God, you just yo-yo, and when something hit you, pandemic hit you, COVID-19, economy hit you, you fall down, now you have to rebuild again. Now you have to spend more money, more time. I want to recommend you to really build your house with a strong foundation, ASAP. Don't waste your time. The Bible says that God used engineer and architect to build a house. That's why Jesus gave the gift to the church. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, they are architects and engineer. I am one of them. So I produce a teaching to lay down foundation to help you to grow, to be strong Christian. We have a series in the YouTube called Building Firm Foundations. I, list, I studied that lesson since I was a young believer. I'm, I'm still on fire today because of that group of lessons. I learned how to build my life with a strong foundation. I want to encourage all of you to listen to that series, 50 sermons, each one about 30 minutes. Very easy. You listen during you eat lunch, listen to one at a time. Amen? So everyone say, build strong foundation. Build, strong foundation. build my house on the good foundation. That is the way of the eagle. Amen? Number two. After the nasty weather went away and the nest still remained, very secure nest, the eagle start to have family. The mother eagle start to lay one to three eggs. They will lay about one to three eggs at a time each year. And the eggs hatch at about 35 days. Eventually, the baby eagle come out. Why the mother eagle look after the egg and have the incubation period of time until the little baby come out? The father eagle fly around to look for food, look for good things to give provision to the family. You remember God say, I am the eagle who hover over you. He is our Father Eagle. What we learn here is that God will provide for us in a supernatural way. He is the Father Eagle to us. He put the wing up to cover us, to protect us. That's why Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 say, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Everyone say, My God is the Father Eagle. He will provide for me. He will take care of me. I am his children. We are his children. Is that right? Psalm 37 verse 25, I have been young and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants baking bread. Our God Father will take care of us provide for us all of our needs. We don't have to worry. The little eagles don't have to worry about what to eat because the father eagle fly out to get food, bring home. And later on, when the baby start to grow more, the mother eagle also fly out to get food for the baby as well. So our God is a family man. He likes to take care of the family. That's why he started the church on the world. Jesus said, I will build my church. The church is the family of God. 
that you come in and God take care of you in the local church. And he anoints somebody to be pastor, prophet, evangelist, to be your spiritual father, to take care of you. You need some spiritual food. You need some provision from God. Amen? And in the natural, the father eagle brought a lot of things to the nest. So many things because he loved his family so much. And the mother eagle would say, what is this? The father eagle, oh, it may be good to you and to, your, to our children. And the mother eagle said, no, this is useless, throw away. Then he came back again with all stuff. He picked them up and bring it to the nest. And the mother eagle had to scrutinize and choose and pick and throw some away because the father eagle was so excited to provide, to feed, and to give more than enough to the babies and to the wife. That's why the Bible says in Psalm chapter 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Our heavenly Father will provide for us and we will not lack any good things. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Everyone say abundance. So that you may always and under all circumstances, always, everyone say always. Always. Everyone say all circumstances. circumstances. And whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Our God will not just give us enough month by month, but he will give us more than enough so that we can enjoy life. We have left over to enjoy life. That is, you look so excited. (laughs) Do you believe that God can give you more than enough? I say God will give you more than enough? (laughs) Really? When you have faith, you get excited. You say, yes, amen. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> you need to get excited because you believe God will take care of you. God will crowd you with good things and with his loving kindness. He is a good father eagle and we are his children. We will receive his provision and at the same time we should imitate his character that we should give provision to our family and we should give provision to our brothers and sisters We are the family of God. We provide for one another. We take care of one another. So that is the second principle. First principle, we build our life on a good rock, good foundation, build a good house, a very strong, secure nest. That is to know the word and practice the word. Two, we believe that God is our provider and we also can provide for our family and do every good things. Number three, we need to grow up. The eagle babies at the beginning, they were lying on the leaves of the nest. But as they grow up, the mother start to take off the leaf, throw the leaf out. So the little eagle start to get up out of the nest and come out and walk around, learn how to walk first. And the mother wants to encourage the little eagle to fly. My brother and sister, eventually we need to fly. We need to soar. We need to get out from the nest and learn how to soar with the Holy Spirit. Our God doesn't want us to be babies, Christian forever. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to learn how to walk by faith, how to be led by the Holy Spirit how to use our gifts to serve others, to be the blessing of others. We need to grow up. We should not be babies forever. God wants us to really grow up. And yes, it's very uncomfortable at the beginning to step out of the nest and try to fly. I have a few movies to show to you. The uncomfortable feeling of the little eagle to fly. Let's start from number 12. Let's show the movie number 12, just only one to two minutes. Quick, 
clips. Look at the eagle who learned how to fly. Eventually, crash. So we allow our brother and sister to serve God in the cat group, and they crash. It's okay. You make mistake. It's okay. Next one, number 13. Look at another one. How the eagle learn how to fly. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. Slip, 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 slip,
Next one, we have three movie to show. Do you understand about learning how to fly? Time keeps on slipping, slipping. Your young star is ready to fly. She just needs some gentle At six months old, their young star is ready Flight to fly. Begins with her she just she needs just some gentle encouragement. Flight school begins with her father showing just the how dad to show how to fly. She isn't keen to fall on them. She isn't keen to follow. It's hardly surprising. Throwing yourself into a 200 meter drop requires a huge... It's hardly surprising. Throwing yourself into a 200 meter drop requires a huge leap of faith. Her mother makes the choice for her. Her mother makes the choice for her. She's in flight, but still getting the hang of it. And heads straight back to safety. She's in flight but still getting the hang of it, and head straight back to safety. Dad encourages her to try again. Dad encourages her to try again. She has another go, but it's hardly any better. She has another go, but it's hardly any better. Finally, she gets the idea. She's looking more confident and even executes. Finally, she gets the idea. She's looking more confident and even executes an impressive flyby. Her father joins the new year cadet. And they fly together. Her father joins the new air cadet. And they fly together in perfect formation. Let me read Deuteronomy chapter 32 one more time. Verse 11, as an eagle stir up its nest, you see the mother stir up, hovers over its young, you can see it in the movie, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him, Jacob, and there was no foreign God with him. The father eagle will come around, and if the younger one is going to fall, he will pick up with his wing and bring back to the nest and try again and again until the young eagle could fly and soar in the wind of the Holy Spirit. My brother and sister, God wants us to grow up. God wants us to learn how to walk by faith. When I was a young believer, I always called my pastor, could you pray for me? Oh, I have a problem. But later on, I grew up and I learned how to command the mountain to go on of my life my, myself. I don't need to call my pastor anymore. I learned how to walk by faith, how to serve God, how to use my gifts, how to be the blessing to other people. Yes, did I fall? I fell. Did I make mistake when I start, first started the church? Oh, a lot. So many people left the church because I made some mistakes. But did I give up to try again to fly? No. I keep getting up and try to swap, uh, to use my wing and soar. And eventually, I am able to fly. That is a Christian life too. We should learn how to walk by faith. We should learn how to walk by the Spirit how to serve the Lord. We step out by faith and do it. Don't worry if you fail, you came down, God will pick you up and you try again and again and again until you are able to use your own faith to walk with God. That's the way the Bible shows us. We need to learn how to leave the nest of security and do something new, maybe start a care group. Maybe go out to evangelize. Maybe set up a party to, to tell your friend how good God is. 
you need to learn how to step out by faith to do the things that God called you to do. You learn how to flow with the Holy Spirit. You need to grow up to be a really strong ego Christian. Amen. Mark chapter 11, 23 to 24. For as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he say will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So God said that let's grow up to use our own faith, to command the mountain to go away to learn how to walk by the Spirit, how to serve God, discover our gift, and use the gift to serve the Lord. And the Bible confirmed with us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. He is like a father eagle. If you fall, he will pick you up and he will strengthen you. He will not desert you. He will help you but you need to learn how to go out and fly and soar yourself. You need to grow up and don't be baby Christians forever. Amen? So we learned three things today. Number one, egos built very secure, strong nests on the rock. We need to build our house on the rock, on the good foundation of the Word of God. We need to take serious of reading the Bible listening to good teaching, practicing what we learn. And if we do that, we are like a house that built on the strong rock and we will not fall easily. Number two, we learn that our God is a family man. He is a father eagle. He would provide for us, take care of us. And he wants to use us to be his hand to provide for other people, to bless other people as well. So, as Christians, we will not lack any good things, and we can do the same thing. We should provide for other people. We should help, bless other people. Our Heavenly Father is the provider. Number three, we learn that we need to grow up. We cannot be baby Christian forever. Yes, it's scary. When you look down from the cliff 2,000 feet below, hmm, should I get out? because I may fall into the valley or into the ground and I die. But you need to step out and start to learn how to flap your wings. And you may make mistakes, that's okay. That's why we have care group. Because care group is a good place for you to practice how to teach the Bible, how to lead people to Christ, how to lead worship. It's a good time. And no one touch you in the care group. We all, yes, go for it, go for it, go for it. We learn, we grow together in the care group how to fly with God, how to evangelize, how to bring people to Christ, how to serve the Lord. Get involved in different ministry in the church. Eventually, you're going to grow up to be strong Christian. Amen? Amen? Grow up in the way of the Lord. Use your faith and learn the way of the eagle. Amen? Did you learn something today? Amen. Three things that we learn. How many, want, how many people want to be eagle Christians? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for teaching us how to be an eagle Christian. Lord, we learn from the nature. You created the eagle to be example to us. And you show us in the scriptures how we should walk victorious life on this planet Earth, Lord. We pray, Father, by your grace, all of us will practice what we learn from this lesson, Lord. And we will grow in faith. We will not be baby forever, Lord. We will use our gift and faith to walk with you, Lord. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for listening to the whole teaching. And I believe that you will take the Word of God seriously into your heart, build your faith, and you walk by faith. The Bible promises in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 3 to 4, let love and faithfulness never leave you, and bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor 
and a good name in the sight of God and man. I believe that you are that person who is so faithful in following the Lord, obeying the Lord, keep the word of God in your heart, and God is going to give you so much favor. And one touch of God's favor will change your life. God bless you. I would like to invite you to come to the next teaching. God poured His fire on the day of Pentecost, and He still opened heaven to pour out His fire in our generation. May the fire of the Lord burn on the inside of you. Brings revival into your life. Send you out to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. May He use you to be a carrier of the fire of revival. May the Lord anoint you. May the fire of God burn every day on the inside of you. And the Lord will be glorified through you. May the grace of God work in your life, and you become fruitful, and you will have many rewards in heaven. May the Lord get the glory through your life.